What's the most ridiculous thing you've bullshitted someone into believing? On a missions trip to the Dominican Republic, I was called over by some friends who wanted me to verify to another guy, Justin, that the carton of milk, the kind we had been drinking all week, was actually milk from a chicken. Immediately I go, yeah, it's just Spanish for female chicken, Justin says. Well why do they put a picture of a cow on the front then that's just so you know it's milk. 10 seconds later he calls our interpreter into the conversation from across the room John. Is this chicken milk yeah is Spanish for hen. Why is there a cow on it then so you know it's milk. John came through like a champ. Later, John's dad and the guy in charge tells Justin he'll try to set up a way for him to get to milk a chicken on the way to the work site and everything. Fast forward to US customs at JFK. 11 group members get through. Justin does not. He claimed a carton of chicken milk. He explained to the guy at customs it's special milk from the Dominican Republic. It comes from chickens. We stopped messing with Justin after that. I once had a guy convinced the chicken nuggets were invented by Nazis as a cure for the common cold. Idea. Chicken stew is good for colds. Reduce chickens to pill form. Chickens can't be compressed past past nugget size. Turns out pill form chicken is delicious fried. And a staple of white trash food was born. Thanks, Hitler. When me and my siblings were much younger my dad owned a Volvo car with a computerized voice. It was a very deep voice that would give you warnings about the car's status. The boot, trunk, is not shut being one I remember. Very creepy now I look back at it. Me, my older brother and our dad would joke that the voice came from a little man inside the car. My younger sister was at an age where you could tell her anything and she would take it as gospel. She actually believed there was a tiny person with an extraordinarily deep voice living in the car. We kept it going for a long time until one day someone crashed into the vehicle and it ended up in the scrapyard. As she cried for the safety of the little man we had to tell her the truth. She was mad at us for weeks. I used to tell my brother I was working for a spy organization and that if he wanted to join in, he would have to complete simple tasks without alerting our parents, such as making me a sandwich while I played the Sega Genesis. My brother convinced me to be his maid when I was like 5. He would make me clean up his messes, then I paid him. I was not a smart kid. I told my mum that there's no internet on Christmas day because it's a public holiday. She spent the past 5 Christmases without the internet and I just don't have the heart to tell her I was joking. Update. She still hasn't realized. You are in too deep now. Better just tell her they changed the rules. Much like all the retail stores have started staying open on Thanksgiving. My mum told me that when I was in primary school I managed to convince the teacher that I couldn't do homework as I was busy helping on the farm I lived on. At the time my mother asked if I ever had any homework to do, I'd tell her no. I got found out at the parents evening at the end of the year when my teacher asked my mum if I would have any free time to do homework next term. In high school, a friend and I once convinced an acquaintance that a wonton was a small furry animal that lived in the back of Chinese restaurant. To make the soup, these animals were boiled and skinned before being tossed into the soup. This kid not only believed us, but went up to the teacher and told him of his newly learned fact. That teacher's face contained the most pure look of disappointment I have ever seen. The most pure look of disappointment I have ever seen. Oh, Kevin, said the teacher. So this happened when I first started dating my wife. I was from a small town in Ohio. She's from Long Island. It was winter break of freshman year and I was going out four wheeling with my older brother. When we were done I called her. She was back in NY. And she asked how it was. On a whim. I told her it was good but we ran into the woods people. I went on to explain how these people lived in a hunting shed we had in the woods behind our house. They never really bothered us. We didn't bother them. They sometimes left beer cans and other trash around the woods but otherwise we didn't really see each other. I also told her how each Christmas they make a homemade wreath out of twigs and dried grass and leave it on our porch. She believed every word of it. She did ask why there were people living there and I went on to explain how they were descendants of very early American settlers who moves into the Appalachian Mountains and just stayed there. I called them something like Malingans or some crap like that based off something I saw on History Channel the day before. 
The story doesn't stop there. Not only did she believe me, but when she told her parents they believed it too. They went on to tell everyone they work with how their daughter was dating a guy from Ohio who has people living in his woods behind his house. The day before I picked her up from the airport, I went into the woods and made a pretty convincing wreath out of sticks and dried grass. When she got there I showed it to her and she was amazed. I couldn't help laughing and had to tell her the truth. She was not happy. That was 8 years ago. We are married now. There must be something wrong with her. Haha, <laughs> that's exactly the same kind of bulls I pull on my wife. You know how there's those silly dumb laws, like in Oregon, ice cream may not be eaten on Sundays, or in Texas, it is illegal for one to shoot a buffalo from the second story of a hotel. When we were visiting Peel Harbor, my dad convinced me that there was a dumb law on the books that said on the grounds of the USS Arizona War Memorial, the United States shall officially remain at war with the Empire of Japan. He pointed at a bunch of Japanese tourists, and said that, technically, we were still allowed to kill them, as long as both us and the Japanese people were actually within the memorial. He went on to say of course, it would be a terrible thing to do, and nobody wants you to do it. I'm just saying, if you pushed one of them into the water, the only thing they could charge you with is littering. Then my stepmother whacked him in the back of the head and said shut up. He's going to actually do it which I found very offensive, because obviously I'm not just raring to murder strangers, restrained only by the law. They could only charge you with littering. Haha <laughs> wow. I once convinced the Midwestern girl I was dating that in my country we all dropped to a knee and jazz hands at the end of the Nigerian national anthem. The tricky thing is to remember, whenever she is around and the national anthem plays, to drop to her knee and do jazz hands with a bored expression on your face, like you've done this so often that it's just muscle memory. When I was in high school our band marched in the Independence Day Parade in DC, this would have been late 80s, while getting ready a lady from Ohio came up to us, intrigued by our southern accents, rural town in Al, she started talking slowly to us, and it kind of hacked me off. I started into a story about how poor we all were, that my dad was a grit farmer and times were especially tough since the Norse had ruined the crop, small critter, like a beaver, it takes 10-15 to cover a las boy, so my daddy had taken to running moonshine up to Tien just to make ends meet, I ended my story telling her our band had to have 27 bake sales just to get shoes for everyone, I did not think she was believing me. Until her eyes started watering and she commended us for our dedication and hoped we liked the big city. A new unit of measure, parts per las boy. I convinced my kids that the Colonel Sanders head on the KFC sign is a guy called Kentucky, and that's why it's called Kentucky Fried Chicken. My cousins and I were in a Ben and Jerry's once and there was a picture on the wall of Ben, Jerry, and this little Asian dude and between them, just some fan I'm sure. So, my younger cousin asked who the other guy was and his brother said, that's and. All the younger cousins believed him. I convinced my younger brother's friend, 12 at the time, that you could actually make a lot of money as a high-end janitor if you went to college and majored in janitorial science. My friend asked me how to say frick you in Vietnamese. I instead taught him to say I eat crap. He spent the day telling all the Vietnamese people in our school that he eats crap. People were too stunned to say anything, so he made it through the day without anyone spoiling it. Either way, he still wanted to tell everyone frick you all day, so he totally deserved it. In year 8, I convinced a girl that the term Jew refer to famous black people, to her. This meant that everyone from Obama to Oprah were Jews, Will Smith, Jew, Nelson Mandela, Jew, Samuel L. Jackson, Jew. This spins an odd light onto the Second World War. My mate had a dumb, annoying 20 something year old girlfriend, he also doesn't eat onion. One night we tricked her into thinking that when he was growing up he had an imaginary friend called Freddy, and that Freddy was an onion, and that's why he didn't eat onions. We said our friend was very self conscious and emotional about it and didn't talk about it. Days later she said to him, it's okay, I know about Freddy he had no freaking idea what she was talking about, she totally believed it. It's because of things like this people don't take me seriously anymore. 
I once worked with a couple who liked the idea of going to Everest, but really didn't fancy the effort of the huge trek to get there. I told them it was a lot easier now that a huge series of chairlifts had just been installed which went all the way to base camp. One Monday morning they arrived at the office and had a pop at me because they'd been to a travel agency to book a trip and the travel agent had promptly laughed at them. Hope you had a great laugh too. Convinced a group of girls that my friend had a lazy eye because he used to work as an amateur P cameraman and took a stray cum shot to the face. The best bit is that he doesn't even have a lazy eye. Similar. Some guy tried to convince the school that I lost my tonsils in a tragic BJ incident. Oh yeah, convinced our office hypochondriac, who was flying off on holiday, that he had to notify the airline medical staff about the small cut he had on his arm. Why? Because, I told him, aircraft cabin pressure meant that open cuts, even if they'd partially healed, would burst open, and spray blood all over the inside of the aircraft, and he could bleed out. I mixed in some truth. That airliner cabins are pressurized, yes but to the equivalent of about 6,500 feet, so there was still a substantial pressure differential. The funny thing is that he asked other people to corroborate this, and they, not even knowing that I'd briefed him, realized instantly that this was a wind up and backed up every word. He actually went off to phone the airline, and came back with a face like thunder, swearing at me. I also convinced another colleague, who was flying off to Dubai and had asked whether it was a dry state, that he needed to buy a westerner's booze pass on arrival at the airport. Told him that yes, you can drink in Dubai, but alcohol is only for godless westerners, and the Arabs have a system in place. On arrival, you have to present your passport and in return, for a few dirhams, you get a booze ticket, which you have to present at every bar or shop, when buying alcohol, otherwise you have to stay teetotal. He wasted a couple of hours googling where to find the booze pass office at the airport, before he too called the airline, and came back swearing. As a Welsh person, I have a story about sheep, I've posted it before if it sounds familiar. I once managed to convince my non-Welsh friends that Welsh sheep know how to use pedestrian crossings. They didn't believe me but I kept at it, and eventually they started to come round. Months later, we were doing a pub crawl in the valleys when we suddenly saw a gang of sheep standing by some traffic lights, looking gormless in a way only sheep and guinea pigs can do. We stopped for a moment, wondering what was about to happen, when suddenly the pedestrian crossing light turned green and the sheep trotted slowly and carefully across the road. My friends, bloody heck h 0 0 man, I thought you were kidding. Me, jaw hitting the floor. Welsh sheep have also learned how to cross cattle grids by rolling over them instead of trying to walk across. I fear that the days of our lordship over the sheep are greatly numbered. Their wrath will be terrible, their retribution swift. However they still haven't figured out that walking a couple of feet uphill stops them from drowning during a flood, so we may just be safe for a while yet. I know someone who convinced her little sister that wherever she goes, the moon would follow her and take her away. It used to drive her into hysterics whenever she walks at night and the moon seems to follow her any which way she goes. My little sister was convinced the moon ball was going to eat her. She was 4 or 5 before we could walk her inside at night without something coveting her head. Other sister was terrified of vampires, called them grandpires. It was adorable except for all the screaming. My dad always had huge elaborate Halloween displays, so we had to use the coat trick for her, too. I had two Facebook accounts under different names. Most other stuff was similar. So I have a friend on the Facebook under my name discover my other one and he sent a friend request to it, which I accepted. I then set forth and convinced him that I actually was two different people who just happened to look identical and worked in the same place and on the odd occasion, went on vacation together. Dumbest person I know I roll. Ran into some people in a bar who were visiting Scotland from somewhere outside Europe. My friend and I managed to convince them that a haggis was a rare type of animal living up in the highlands. Went into great detail to describe what they looked like, even that they have special haggis breeding farms which many people debate about because they are not treated well. Please tell me you told them that they had longer legs on some side of their bodies than the other, which they use for running around hills. 
In my town we have a street named Wintermute. Driving by one day, a friend said that she thought Wintermute was a weird name. I explained that it's actually pronounced Wintermute and that it's the French word for gracious. She thought it was the most interesting thing and went on to tell everyone else this amazing fact. In my freshman year of college I convinced a shitload of people that I was paying my way through college with residual checks from my time as an original kids bop kid. It is such a far fetched thing to lie about it. It's perfect. Convinced a bunch of co-workers Forrest Gump was a true story. Stated off but telling them how my friend visited Greenbow, Alabama and saw Gump's grave. He's right next to Jenny. That one is totally believable. Frick. I love that movie. There is a girl I work with who is extremely gullible, and pretty much believes anything that sounds even sort of plausible. So me and my roommate, who also worked there, would come up with lots of vaguely believable things to tell her. Things we successfully convinced her of, that North Dakota is the highest elevated point in North America, and as a result the moon appears 20% larger in that state. Most of North Dakota's money comes from their moon viewing tourism industry. The name Manuel is Spanish for bagel. We work at a Tim Hortons, so every once in a while she would hand someone a bagel and say here is your, Manuel. That we shouldn't use the word chisel because it's a racial slur against mixed race African Asians. That my roommate was feral as a child 6 months after being lost in the woods. And that his speech impediment was a result of the language delays that feral children acquire. There are more. I will ask my former roommate on Facebook to remind me of the others. Your Manuel story reminded me of a story. I work in a restaurant. And sometimes we get customers that only speak Spanish. Our register girl wanted to know how to say here is your order in Spanish. One of the guys told her. So she takes the food out and tells the customer gracious. Tengo un bigote. Thank you. I have a mustache. Showing my Asian families around and drove by some large farms. Told them those gained hay bales wrapped in plastic were gained marshmallows. And they harvest those to cut them into small marshmallows. When I was about 12, I fell off my bike and the front tire tore up my calf pretty bad. There were like 8 or 9 cuts. Al spaced evenly, kinda circular, and laid out in a curve. I snagged to convince a shocking number of people that it was actually a shark bite. I convinced a girl I was dating in the early 90s that the song Pearl Jam song Even Flow was a homage to the popular baby supply company Even Flow. Broke the lyrics down and made them all metaphors for the wonder and awe in a newborn baby's eyes, the joy of discovery, etc. She wasn't particularly bright, but she had big boobs. Just like Smells Like Teen Spirit is a jingle for a women's deodorant. I got this Iranian student back in high school to think goddamn it was the most polite way of saying please. He got kicked out of the library when he used it on the teacher librarian. Came to punch me in the shoulder, but I was laughing too hard. Gimme the book goddamn it. I remember telling my brother cheese could kill you if you ate it more than once a week. He didn't eat cheese for a while. I mean, heart disease is one of the leading killers in America. So, as most of you know, as you should, New Zealand is made up of two main islands, the North Island, located, you guessed it, in the North, and the South Island. In our science textbook there was a map of the South Island. Q girl next to me, what country is this? I told her it was Afghanistan. She believed. She raised her hand and asked our teacher why there was a map of Afghanistan in the textbook, out loud, in front of the whole class, that, or when I lived in America, and used to bulls about New Zealand the whole time. We ride sheep to school. We only have one flight a week which leaves the country otherwise you have to take the boat to Australia. A drunken night out with four mates also led to us convincing a group of girls we were One Direction, who were in town that weekend. Bullshitting is my forte. Username checks out. That you could ride Yoshi in Super Mario 64 if you fell right on top of him from the cannon. My friends tried that far more times than they should've. Holy crap. I did this too. Except I was the one who tried it multiple times. Frick you Peter. I'm a police officer. When I joined I looked all of 12 years old. 
Crooks looking for any cracks in the armor would always give me the bulls you're too young to be a copper. I'd hit back with I'm on work experience from the local school. If you could call them after and tell them how good I was that would help me pass. Full kit on and everything. I reckon with the junkies it was a good 80-90% hit rate. When my children were all much smaller, I convinced them that it was illegal to supply balloons to minors. I have PTSD and the sound of the balloons popping was terrifying to me, and I didn't want to deal with it. So I told them that they were illegal. It worked quite well except when we'd be in restaurants and an innocent waitress would sweetly say to them, Do you want a balloon and one of them would say, Do you want to go to prison? I'm 6. Little kids are so much fun to troll. I was cooking once and my little sister kept stealing the bell peppers I was cutting up. She was like 3 at the time and still believed most of what I said, so I cut up some onions and asked her if she wanted to try white bell peppers. She still remembers this event 3 years later now and doesn't trust me when I give her some food she doesn't know. I convinced an entire film festival that I was a German director of an indie horror film. I was the sound guy for the festival and he couldn't make it. I dunno if I ruined his understanding of vehicles forever, but I managed to convince my uncle's toddler that red cars go the fastest, and that the exhaust pipes were boosters. I once convinced my wife that Rick Astley invented the selfie stick. A quick google search told her that I was lying and now she doesn't trust me when I tell her an interesting fact. My wife still thinks that Peppa Pig was created by Rick Astley's youngest brother. I was at a wedding with my family and convinced my little sister, she was about 8 at the time, that the fancy looking butter for the rolls that came on the plate was ice cream. She wasn't happy with me after that. I hope I'm not too late for this. I have a friend that I frick with constantly but this time was probably the worst. I convinced him he might have AIDS from putting a ticket in his mouth. We were going into a parking garage with him driving, and when he got our parking ticket he put it in his mouth so he could use both hands on the wheel to make a turn. When he did that I quickly said jokingly you don't do that, that's how you get AIDS. My friend then turns and says what do you mean with a serious tone. It was at this moment that there was the classic angel and devil on my shoulder situation, and I decided I was going to commit as this was too golden of an opportunity. I told him that paper cuts are common with tickets, and aides can live for a long time on paper. These tickets were recycled often, so there was a chance that at some point one of the tickets could have become contaminated. Furthermore the capillaries in your mouth and lips are closer to the surface, which causes the redness in them, but also makes it easier to pass things through into your body. This all occurred over a nice dinner, and after I got done explaining the science to him there was a long pause. My friend is extremely gullible to say the least. He looked crestfallen. On the ride back it was utterly silent in the car. I was trying my best not to show my giant crap eating grin so I just looked out the window the entire time. Then for the last twist of the blade I turned to him and said with the straightest face I could muster just promise me you'll get tested man. I'm worried about you. It sounded like I was welling up to cry, but in reality I was holding back laughter as best I could. My friend hugged me, dropped me off at my house and drove away. I was finally able to let out all the laughter I had bottled up. About 30-40 minutes later I get a text from him saying I freaking hate you. His sister is a pharmacist and more importantly is slightly intelligent, and apparently he told her this and she laughed at him for being such a freaking idiot. I still tease him about this years later. Telling him to promise you he'll get tested was the icing on the cake. I convinced someone that putting their iPhone on a microwave will give them 10% extra battery. I stopped them before they did it because I'm not that cruel. I got my sister-in-law to put her car keys in the freezer during the winter so she wouldn't damage the ignition switch by sticking a warm key in a cold switch. Convinced some kids on CSGO that Helen Keller was the first professional female basketball player and that Stevie Wonder invented night vision goggles and binoculars. Legitimately convinced a friend that he was a Jedi. Locker room after gym class many years back. He's screwing around pretending to force push stuff. Him watching him out the corner of my eye to see, he doesn't think I can see him. And sure enough he eventually does it towards me. I jump away from him and slam into the wall, and stare at him with a look of utter horror. He believed it for the rest of the day. 
I once had a fairly gullible roommate. Said roommate was a bit of a mooch and always wanted to split food with whoever was cooking regardless of what it was, just so he didn't have to prepare his own meal. Pizza was his all time favorite food. Didn't matter if it was frozen, delivery, etc. I had just returned from my accounting course and wanted to make some lunch so I threw a pizza in the oven. I was the only person in the apartment, had two other roommates, and he walked in after his own class and smelled the apartment. He smelled my pizza cooking, but also saw me eating a bowl of spinach on the couch. Are you cooking a pizza? Number. So he knocks on our other roommates doors to ask if they were making a pizza, and they weren't there. There is no one else here, that has to be your pizza. What are you talking about? I'm not making a pizza, is there one in our oven? Can't you smell it? No, I have a cold, I can't smell anything. He proceeds to open the oven and takes note of the pizza I'm cooking its toppings, and notices the timer is only a couple minutes away from expiring. If this isn't your pizza, and no one else is here, then who the heck is using our oven to cook a pizza? Beats me. The door was unlocked when I got here. But it's not my pizza. I'm going to go ask around. As my roommate leaves the apartment to go ask our neighbors if they are using our oven, I proceed to eat a couple slices of pizza and store the rest in the refrigerator. As I'm eating my slices, my roommate returns. You're just eating that random pizza? Yes. You stupid crap. It's my pizza. Rage ensues. And I shared a slice. Better world a bean. Yeah. The guy who made it gave me a slice. You just missed him. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.